working with a large insurance carrier, we approached a process challenge with their carrier licensing support team. These folks support the producers in the field that sell insurance and represent the carrier. So the support team helps with onboarding, administrative setup, handling issues, relationship management, things of that nature. So if the producer needs to amend their contract, let's say to add a new state appointment, this person has to jump through a bunch of administrative hoops to do something that seems quite simple. UiPath has had a ton of success applying AI and enterprise automation to solve these types of challenges and remove manual work. There are, however, a couple of points in this process that we'll talk through that are still proving to be a bit challenging for even the best in class enterprise automation. The first is what I would term dynamic research. And so part of this process, the carrier licensing support agent had to go out to a number of different sources and dynamically decide step-by-step -step where to find information and the variables that involve the decision process of how they choose where to look are very dynamic from one broker and one producer to the next. The second area we might get a little bit stuck or challenged with end-to-end -end automation across all of these steps is over here where the user had to cross-reference a lot of information with internal knowledge base articles. And those knowledge base articles are basically long form text. The carrier licensing team shares a lot of sort of tribal knowledge across the team members by writing articles and posting them to their, their CRM. And so they go through the search process of find the right article and then read through a bunch of text and paragraphs and tabular information that looks like this up in the right corner to find the answer that they need in that moment in time. In both of these cases, it's simply not practical to expect that automation developers will be able to codify and distill this sort of dynamic type of work with large bodies of text and lots of different research points into a set of if-else logic, into machine language that's very rigid and structured in how it executes. With all of that said, we still accomplish a lot with enterprise automation, applying specialized models to understand inbound emails, read information from documents, aggregate a lot of information from various systems. We still in this process served all of that information up to the user as a human in the loop step. So they saw all of the information aggregated and still had to go and execute those di the dynamic research points and cross-reference points with the knowledge base articles. So while we automated a lot and shortened the average handle time for the transaction, there was still this human in the loop step that took a handful of minutes and involved that manual effort. Agents are changing all of that. An agent is built around a large language model. Like hiring a new employee, the large language model is where it gets its core skills and experience. But with a new employee, you typically train them and you get them up to speed on specific knowledge that your company needs and your team needs to operate effectively. And that's where we inject things like context grounding or the memory for the agent. So we load in the knowledge base articles, the policy documents, the standard operating procedures, and now that agent understands the specifics of certain things that you do within your team. In addition, the new hire needs tools and applications to perform work. Similarly, we'll give tools in the form of automations and connections to data to this agent so that it can go out and pull data from the CRM, from the policy management system, from the claims system. Lastly, just like a new hire has a team lead to work with and ask questions and escalate things to, we provide an escalation path for the agent to go out to the carrier licensing subject matter expert and ask for help. Now we have an additional helper in the process that can understand long text articles. It can reason about a goal that it's been given and make decisions on where to find information, what sort of actions it might need to take to accomplish a particular task. And so we can plug this agent into our process, taking the inputs from say the communications mining or document understanding extract from the broker request or the producer request and pass a discrete output to a workflow to be taken forward. So what that looks like if we go back to our process diagram is our producer request comes in and we still use our specialized AI that's very accurate in understanding the message and extracting key data elements from a document but then we'll pass that information to our agent where it can take care of that dynamic research that we talked about and taking a lot of these data elements and cross-referencing with those long knowledge base articles through all of that text. When it gets through those steps, 
it's integrated natively with the rest of our enterprise automation to take forward what it finds through its research and automate specific steps downstream. If it gets stuck, we still have the ability to escalate. And note that the idea here is that before when we had the user 100% in the loop and still performing manual heavy tasks like the research, now this user has a very prescriptive action served up by the agent. It will be a shorter handle time and a less frequent handle time for that user to help that agent finish out the job. So all in all, what we've accomplished is true end-to-end -end automation, where we've automated very complex tasks that were previously not attainable with enterprise automation or specialized AI models. Now, the next question is, what's happening behind this agent? We're giving customers a way to quickly build trusted enterprise agents without any code. These agents come with the capabilities we outlined earlier, but they're also uniquely connected to the rest of the UiPath ecosystem to orchestrate specialized AI automations, other agents, and people across a defined process, all built on reliability and a trusted governance model. So an AI engineer or a prompt engineer can approach this canvas here, and they will love this in terms of the flexible model selection that they have, the fine-tunable parameters around how to interact with that model, and the easy organization of all the capabilities for advanced agentic use cases from the tools that they connect from the UiPath automations and connectivity, context, escalation paths, and so on. The most critical function, uh, arguably, for an agent is the prompting that goes into defining what that agent is, what its purpose in life is, and the goal that it should follow when it's creating its plan on how to execute. So my goal is quite simple. I've set this agent to focus on helping brokers with support requests, and I've instructed it, I'll just point out one detail, to check its standard operating procedures before it creates its plan. And so I have loaded in its standard operating procedures to its memory and see that I've trained this agent to operate on a couple different types of support requests so far with some plain English descriptions of how to solve for that request. So in this case, this agent will ingest this information, or it already has, and at runtime, when it receives a new request, it references and compares, is this a dual appointment amendment request? And if so, I should do these sorts of things and create my plan around this instruction base. Okay, so I'm gonna run this, and we'll see at least one test run, and then I'm gonna show a little bit more around how we can scale these types of test runs for these agents to make sure that they operate exactly as we expect. As we kick this off, notice that this is running the get SOPs, that's the standard operating procedures, so it's reading through that standard operating procedure file that I just showed you so that it can decide what to do next. It creates its plan and it knows, hey, I've got to go out and make sure I've got the right state code and understand where to find the license source for Carl Patrick Thomas. This is the email that we've simulated here where Carl is emailing in for a dual appointment status adding Mississippi. All right, so it knows I've got to go and find the Mississippi license source. It, the Mississippi DOI is what it found and it's going to find that license for Carl Patrick Thomas. It captures the NPN based on a search, right? So this is that cross-reference action. It, find, it looks up in one place, it does that dynamic research to find where it needs to look next. And that dynamic nature is what agents are really good at, ingesting lots of text and figuring out where to go find things. Finally, this is a step I'll highlight, the Get QA article. That's the knowledge base that I highlighted. So it's a big, long knowledge base that it's got some text from and it references, hey, is the contract number appropriate for this dual appointment amendment? and does my knowledge base rule set align with this request? If so, it closes out, it's already done, to update the Salesforce producer profile and send a response directly back to Carl, noting that, hey, we got your request and everything's been taken care of because I did all of these reference checks, they all looked good, and I passed that on to a workflow to send this email automatically. Additionally, it will report to us what it did across the different steps and what data it found along the way. Now, this is a single test where I passed in an email with some attachment data that you see down below. So these were the inputs to this run. 
we can mock up a variety of inputs and run these tests at scale so that you can really get some confidence and trust in how these agents operate across a variety of requests that may come in from a producer. Right? One might be a dual appointment request, another might be an appointment inquiry, another might be some other request that it's not trained to handle. And we can run these tests and evaluate objectively against an assertion, you know, did this agent operate the way we expect? Was its output correct? That way, drilling into the trace of each one of these, we can get a very um, explainable and detailed view of how it worked across its tasks and the plan that it made and how it performed. Finally, we can publish these agents out to the broader ecosystem of UiPath for use within workflows, orchestrated processes, and ultimately inject this in, as I mentioned in the slide earlier, to an existing process where it can serve its role and create a more end-to-end -end automated scenario. With UiPath Agents, we achieved the last mile of AI transformation in an end-to-end -end automation. But what does it mean for the people involved? For the AI solution architect, they were able to deploy this solution extremely quickly with a fast time to market, serving the needs of the business right away. For the carrier licensing support expert, they can focus on meaningful producer relationships and eliminate some of the research and the knowledge base article reference the menial admin work that they had to do previously. And for the producer, they can start selling in that new state right away, generating revenue and income for their own business as well as the carrier they support.